the things that he's not going to reveal to you because you're not in the position. Knowledge is given to the Holy Ghost. Whatever he wants, he will use. But any other thing is useless to him. It's just all learning by men. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise he the Lord, somebody. Give him glory, somebody. Give him glory again. So you got to understand, it's the gift of Christ that is given to the body. Will bring perfection in the body. Will bring the body you are fitly joined together the same fivefold ministry that he gave. It, and they are seeing more than this and what they see is always people business and they never see themselves. Are you hearing me somebody? Praise be to Almighty God. And they to see you got eyes in the church but you got to understand there are things that God will reveal differently to the pastor than what you got to understand that you see praise be the Lord somebody so I don't need to get in your what business what's important is what is for Christ that needs to come out of you that's what is important Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God, somebody. Affecting of what? The holy ones, the saints. And some of you, you should be ashamed to be called a saint and don't live like one. You want me to say it again? Say no. So you got to want you a what? Holy one. You are separate. You are white. Hallelujah, somebody. You are white. Righteous. That's what a saint is. Glory to God. Now, so he. Because he has a what? A body to look after. So we become what? Praise again. Now, so you think that you can get into the unity of the faith by yourself? Stop kidding yourself. Some Christians, they always be. I will not take it back. I say it again. You will go to hell because he gave the fivefold ministry. And you got to understand, he said, till we all come to the what? Uh, the unity of the faith. So it's going to be a what? Exist. Get tired of them if you want, but you better. Because he said wheat and tears uh, till the day of harvest. And you got to understand when you refuse to come, you turn a tear now. You're a degenerate wheat. Not good for anything else now. Praise ye the Lord somebody. If you run, you better come back. Uh, are you hearing me? Because you're a member of the body and you're here to help to see that the body works. Praise be to God. If it has one leg, it will be hopping like this. Cut off the fingers and it can wash anything because it's a member of the body. Praise be to Almighty God. So you got to understand if you're a leg, then you better come. Can't run. Christ is looking for you. Praise be the Lord, somebody. 
Glory to God. So you got to understand it's a body, an elected body of God. So each of you Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. to God somebody hallelujah so when he talks about that he's talking about coming to what he calls that you are filled with all the fullness of God full measure that you receive now what as it were clearly revealed now in you are you hearing me hello somebody now when you leave your house you represent your house when your children leave your house, they represent your house. If they behave badly, they are going to blame your house. Well, the, the sad thing about it, but not that I am perfect as they discuss perfection, but in terms of maturity, I think I am. But you got to understand, some of you don't even walk like me anyway. So they see you do something, and the first thing they say, that's what they're going on with down that church. Because you being an idiot. Hello. Are you understand what I'm saying? And then the next thing they trouble is Christ himself. Because the first thing they will say, if that's how a Christian behave, I don't want to be no Christian. So Christ, because of us, is no more. And sometimes we don't even... That's one is sad, isn't it? Hello? Now listen to what he said. So then you got to come to the point where you don't play with sin anymore. Where you are not tossed to and fro anymore. Are you hearing me? When you come to a place when every wind of doctrine doesn't bother you anymore because you're settled in Christ. So by the time you hear certain stuff, the spirit in you can already analyze what's really going down on the ground. Praise be to Almighty God, and you realize that what Christ is already what talking to you now.
That's why when people just start coming to church, they shouldn't run everywhere first. They should sit down and learn the basic things about Christ first before you start running everywhere. Are you understanding that? Good. So you got to understand some babes sucking their mother's milk. And the mother can't just pass around the babe to every other mother who have milk in their breasts. You understand what I'm saying? You got to suck your breasts first. And when you get enough now, you probably can't stand on your own. See that? So when other things come your way now, you have enough strength or the mind to analyze certain things now. Glory to God. There's a certain lady who came here. And when she came, and she was all filled with enthusiasm. And she said, God, send her up here. Praise the Lord, somebody. Well, she got baptized in the name of Jesus and all of that. And she was here. But the moment she started visiting some other churches, one day when we went down to her house, she said to me, you baptized me in the wrong way. I was supposed to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. When I said to her, who told you all of that? Because the name is Jesus. And she was argumentative. So we just walk, leave her. Because guess what happened? She went and got mixed up with stuff rather than learning the things that she was what taught. And if she had sat there and learned it, understanding would have what come. And now she's not going. Hallelujah, somebody. They got to understand what I'm telling you here. Glory to God. And you got to know, that's why you come here on Sabbath and you believe in the word of God. You got to know why you are worshiping on Sabbath. It can't be just a notion that we all come and you believe it. You got to understand what I'm telling you. If you are called by Almighty God, walking in the new covenant, that's the reason for it. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. So you got to understand the pretext of which you stand. It's the new covenant that Jesus Christ inaugurated. And that's why you are here today. If you believe in the baptism of the name of Jesus, you must understand why. Because if you're not baptized in his name, your sins are not remitted. Your sins remain the same until it happens. Because there's only one name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. And that's the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't care about the opinionated people. The Bible declares that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you got to understand, you got to speak in tongues. Whether you like it or you don't like it. I was not a Pentecostal when I got saved. But Jesus came and saved me. And when he said, be filled with the Holy Ghost. And a couple of days later, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I was not in a Pentecostal. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God, I can talk because I was not a Pentecostal. Glory to God, I went to a Mennonite church. It's not a Pentecostal church, but the day when Jesus appeared and saved me, baptized me with the Holy Ghost, that's how I know about the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. I was not taught by to be baptized in the name of Jesus. It was Jesus himself who taught me. And that's how I knew about it too. Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God. At the time, I was going to a church that baptized people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But God separated me from them and brought me to a place and what? Showed me this is what it is. Not by the teachings of men. He came himself. So I'm not tossed to and fro by what people say. And their intellectual quest. Never been to a theological seminary. But I will tell you, I could read just about any theological book. And the Holy Ghost will tell me what is and what is not. Glory to God, I'll read. And he said, my son, be cautious when you read this book. And then I will read and he will tell me what is what. By the Holy Ghost. Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God, somebody. 
You got to understand it's not by might nor by power. It's by my spirit, say the Lord. It's not by intellectual quest and being eloquent. It's by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God, somebody. So in those days, when Jesus would come, turn up personally. See, I prayed for long hours. Didn't have no wife to think about. So when I go home, it's me and Jesus alone. Four hours I'm praying. Glory to God, somebody. And you got to understand, even when I'm praying all the time in tongues, there are times I could just write out what the Lord is saying. Even after I get married, the same thing. I'll be praying and the Lord, my wife was here and I could write out all the stuff after I finished speaking. Hallelujah. Just write them out what the Lord said. Glory to God, somebody. Things he's pointing out to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. You got to understand, sometimes you hear people talk and they will talk. Your experience is what you must want. Remember, when you experience God in your life, when you experience his voice, when you experience his word, different from just reading it, but become a part of you. Literally like it inside you when you hear it. That's what he called a rhema right there. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. So you want to be a member of the body of Christ? You want to be a bride, part of the bride of Christ? You got to get to hear God for yourself. You got to call on him for yourself and hear him for yourself. So you can distinguish when God is speaking and when he's not. Are you there? So that's why they are given, see? Because you have crafted men today. I'm in verse 14. You have people who are what? Cunning. Are you hearing me? Hello. Some of them, when they, when they finish talking to you, you'd never believe what you used to believe before. If you're not grounded in Jesus. Hey, Jesus. You asked me, how would a penitent? Leave a Pentecostal church. Go to a church that doesn't even believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and become a member of that church. I can't figure it out. But you got to understand, glory to God, somebody. If you are hooked up with Jesus, by the time they come, the Spirit also, also give prophecy. Are you hearing me? And you got to understand by the call, the time you call on Jesus, the devil can quote scriptures and he can tell you things from the scripture. It is the Holy Ghost that gives the direction. You could worship on the Sabbath all you want, but if you're not walking Jesus, you're still going to hell. So you could go and tell people, I worship on the Sabbath. And you walk like a devil. Sabbath alone means holy. Set apart. Glory to God. It's almost an imprint of your life. That I'm holy, I'm righteous, set apart. Just like how God set apart a day, it goes straight into the time of the millennium and the universal kingdom of Almighty God, which to enter it, you gotta be. So, Sabbath is not just for today. This which you celebrate now, you're celebrating the time when you're gonna enter the kingdom of God. And this is a representative of the time of rest to come, which you will walk in. Praise be to Almighty God. You are just living glory about they be so the sign of the kingdom of Almighty God to come. That's what you're doing. So Sabbath is not nothing to argue about in terms of whether you cook or you don't cook. Because number one, God said it's complete rest. Hello! Getting it? And what he calls rest is this day is for him and him alone, not him and somebody else. 
Not him on your stove. Not him on your washing machine. Not him and you have one person working somewhere for you while you are here on Sabbath. That's an abomination to Almighty God. You must know what you stand for. If you don't know, you will fall. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So you don't need to watch how others say it. Say what the Bible said. Praise be to Almighty God. Because if you believe what God said, then you're going to understand you're part of what? The bride of Christ and the bride is holy. So you don't need to get in talk with people who talk about you only do live holy on Sabbath day. You got to live holy every day. Hello? But there's only one day that God sanctified and set apart for himself. And those who enter on that day with him, they have entered into what? His rest, pointing towards the one to come. So people don't need to argue about all those stupid things. You must know what you're entering for. And you must know where you're going, where you're headed. So why we can't cook? Are you a fool? You must read the Bible. Cook what you need to cook today. Get it? Bake what you need to cook today. Eat some and leave some tomorrow for the Sabbath. So is it cold food? Yes, it is. You guys got smart and I have to commend you. Those of you figure out the sun business. Praise the Lord, somebody. Well, it's still God's light, isn't it? But I got to commend you. Clap your hands. You know, some of you... <laughs> The point is that if you believe, you're members of what? This bride. And you believe. Get it? Then if you really believe, then you must what? Show the example. Are you hearing me, somebody? So you got to understand then, if you're walking according to Christ, which saved you, this Christ who saved you. But when he saved you, he saved you to live according to his word. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. And if you're going to live according to his word, glory to God, somebody, you can't go in and twist up scripture. You got to understand, he said, don't eat certain things. You can't come and talk about God said, bless and eat. And just yesterday, a lady was telling me because he saw me the pizza to some kid. And then when I asked her what's on that thing, she said, pepperoni. I said, I can't buy that. That's pork. She said, not for your life. God said, bless and eat said to her you forgot the other verse for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer so I ask her which of them is sanctified by God now God will understand see that people choose what they want to what? take out of the Bible but when God said what God said sanctified by the word of God then anything that is going in your body that's why you pray also for it to be sanctified and those that are already sanctified you only give thanks for it to swallow it down so when they challenge you on those kind of stuff they toss to and fro then you say, I'm new to this thing. The principle remains the same. If you're picking up manna, pick up twice for the what? For today and the Sabbath. Get it? The principle remains the same. Bake what you need to bake. Cook what you need to cook. Eat some and leave tomorrow. That's what God said when they had manna. And those who what? Didn't obey. Things happened to them. Any other day they pick up and wanted to serve it spoiled. But when they leave over for the Sabbath, it all remains. Yeah. Supper remain the same, even though the circumstances are now different. So if you're going to believe God, believe God. See, so he gave fivefold ministry what? To bring us to what? The place that we need to get to. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Give him glory again, somebody. Give him glory again. Now, understand now what he really gave you all of this thing for. Now, verse 15. And somebody said, boy, 
This is what we don't like. Say it now. You don't read it yet. Say it. Well, say it. Boy, this is what we don't like now. Say it. This is what we don't like now. What he said. But speak in the truth. Not in anger. Not in vexation. Not in want to ostracize and kill people. But speak the truth in love. Now say, boy, we're running that one big time. When I get angry, I really feel like I want to just punch some of them in their nose. You have your children. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm real angry, I never used to beat my kids in when I'm real angry. I'd rather cool out first. Then when I finish cool out, I get the belt and I'll do what I have to do. One of the reasons why I would not do that is because I'm aware of the power of anger. It can destroy people. When you're very angry and you don't hold it in check, you can destroy folks. You will say things that you have no business saying. And even in your house with your wife or your husband and you're so angry and you just let off your mouth because you're mad, you use words that will cut people deep and sometimes it will never be healed again. That's why the Bible tells you it is hard to win a brother who you have wounded. See that? Because that's why I tell you there are some things you learn to keep when you're angry. Not like what your child did and all of that, but you can't just open your mouth and tell the child anything. That you got to understand, anger will destroy folks. When you correct your child, you should correct your child in love. You can't take broomstick like you want to break their bones or the woman who knocked her kid with a two by four out at the school gate and the child end up dying. What was she thinking if you're going to knock a kid with a two by four? So when you curse a brother or you curse a sister and, and, you, and, and you're telling them the truth, yes. You're telling them, yes, you're a bad person and you're so wicked, yeah. But when you say to them, that's why people like you are not going to make it. That's why you're all going to damn and go to hell. Because you're just like whatever. Get what I'm saying? Are you, do you do that? Is that love that you're talking there? What are you talking like there? You're talking like the devil. Glory to God, somebody. You have the power to condemn them to hell. You got to understand. God expects you to speak the truth in what? Say the word. Hallelujah. Now when you speak the truth in love, it brings edification, that is, to grow up into him in all things, which is what? The head. So when you speak the truth in love, you can cause people to what? Grow up in Christ. Uh-oh. Condemn. Satan likes to push people down. Satan wants to what? Extract vengeance and justice out of them. I don't trouble people, so I don't like when people mess with me, but you mess with God all the time. Hallelujah, somebody. And the same thing God rendered to you, he expects you to render it to somebody else. So if God have mercy on you, you got to have mercy on other folks too. If your theology is all that great, and your theology is all truth, but there's no compassion behind your theology, then your theology is nothing. If it's just word and no action, it is nothing. That's what it is. Glory to God, somebody. Fivefold ministry is given for that, for the bride. 16, it tells you now what it says. Everybody look at it, what it says. Christ, that is Christ. From whom the whole body fitly put together, said the word compact. Hello. By that which what? Every joint what? Must work to what? 
supply. The body can be compact together if all the members not working to bring it together. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. If one is pulling that way and the other one is pulling that way and only two can what, be together like that, a body can be compacted. In other words, if it's all compacted, you ever see the earth when it's all compact? Water can't pass through it. When we are compact together, the devil can't get in easily among us. Praise be to Almighty God. Why? Because I'm reaching to hold you and you are reaching out to me to hold me and nobody can get in between but some of us we can't understand that right and so you open the door sometime for the devil to come in get it what happened between me and you brother and sister happened between me and you so I don't have to go tell no gentile what went down between you and I are you understand what I'm saying? Praise the Lord, somebody. When you you are given what? Open way for the devil to point finger at them. Glory to God. But when discovered between us and us alone, nobody else can point any finger in the way. Because they don't know. Glory to God, somebody. Are you give the Lord a praise? Give him glory, somebody. Give him glory, somebody. That's why the Bible tell you love cover the multitude of sin. That's why when things happen in your house, you can't go out on the road and blab it to everybody because people will be pointing fingers. Love covers a multitude of what? Sin. In other words, love doesn't say everything. Love keeps some right inside here. What if Christ was to tell you everything he thinks about you? But he sees it. And the first thing he starts doing is working on how to get, get it out of you. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. That is just so sweet. Come on, say, that is just so sweet, Lord. That is just so sweet, Jesus. Now, Prof used the word efficacy. The Bible uses the word effectual, basically saying the same thing. And effectual there means to produce the desired result. Not any result, but the desired one. Glory to God. I go straight to your house again. If the wife and the husband interact a certain way, then what each of them is looking for will be the desired result. Of their love, isn't that so? Praise the Lord, somebody. But if one starts to behave out of character and out of thought, then what the other one is looking for is not the desired outcome that they are going to get. Are you following me? So you got to understand then, for the desired outcome to happen, then changes has to be what? Made. If every time you notice the desired outcome is not coming, then you got to what? Change something. If you flip on the light switch and you don't see the light come on, you know something is wrong. Isn't that true? So you have to determine one out of two things. Either the bulbs are bad or the switch itself is bad. So if you change the switch and you flick it and no light comes on, then you've got to figure out then the bulbs are what? Bad. See? If you don't change anything, everything remains the same. Think about it. Well, read the Bible now and you'll see for yourself. Now, he tells you from whom the whole body fitly joined together and what? Say the word. By that which every joint is supplying to what? For the body to be what? Compacted. Are you? In other words, every person is carrying out their work and their operation to keep the body what? Close. By that which supply it according to what? The effectual or the produce the desired result. Working in what? The measure of every part. Make an increase of the body unto the building up of itself in love. 
That means when I am doing what I need to do, you doing what you need to do, and you doing what you need to do, and you need doing what you need to do, guess what happened? The body becomes compact and it just starts growing. So love requires effort. Fivefold ministry is placed there. See? To help the body to get to that place. Christ wants us to come to the place where love just starts springing up like that out of us. Because he said, when men see it, they will know that the Father sent him, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. He was the apostle. He was the prophet. He was the pastor. He was the teacher. But he disseminated those gifts among men, representing himself to bring his body together. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him glory. Somebody lift up his holy name. Some Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. So the fivefold ministry then is given for that reason. That's why the pastor can't be in everybody's business. And the apostle can't be in everybody's business. And they can't be in sese and sese not and all that kind of business. They are ordained by God to bring what? The body together. Praise ye the Lord. And they can't pray for one set of people over another set of people because that's not going to bring the body together. Get it? Praise the Lord, somebody. So you got to understand then what God is saying. You are what? The pride of Christ. And the pride of Christ has to be what? Without spots and without wrinkle. Must be holy and righteous and set apart for Almighty God. Because he's coming back for a church. Glory to God somebody. He's coming back for a congregation. And when he comes back for his congregation. There must be no sin. Glory to God. So God is working. And he's going to work straight down until the time. When his body is compact. And come together. Praise be the Almighty God, and people learn how to walk, not tossed by their what, torn through by what, every other wind of doctrine. But that will be his bride, worthy of the marriage. Praise the Lord, somebody, worthy to go to what, the marriage supper of the Lamb, worthy to walk with Him, everywhere He goes, everywhere He turns, worthy. Are you worthy today? Are you really the body of Christ? What is your life like? Are you really forbearing? Are you really tolerant? Are you really long suffering? Are you walking worthy of the Lord? Worthy of his call. But what are you walking in? Think about it. I'm going to read this translation for you. Just at the end of where I stopped. Put it a different way that you can understand clearly. What it's saying. And this translation puts it this way. From verse 14 it says. That we will no longer be immature like children. When I look at you and see how some of you operate, you are like little kids. We won't be tossed to and fro about by every wind of new teachings. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love. Growing in every way more and more like Christ. Who is the head of the body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. And each part does its own special work. Its own operation. It helps the other parts grow. I'll say that again. You are here to help each other to grow. You are here to help each other to raise up from where they are. You are here to push your brother and to push your sister to holiness and walk with God. That's what you're here for. To help each other to grow. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. And the Bible puts it another way. When we all come to the full measure of the statue of Christ. 
that we are filled with all the fullness of God. So, what are you here for? What is your purpose here? Hallelujah! Is it after now? You go by yourself and you don't have to interact with anyone. What are you here for? Well, the Bible said you are here to help each other to grow. So the question you'll have to ask yourself hereafter is what can I do to help my brother or my sister to grow? That's the question you'll have to ask now. And you'll have to go and search God for that answer. But there's one thing for sure. You can't do it without me. And I can't do it without you. But the ultimate thing is that if you don't walk with God, God can do it without you. God can't do it without man, so he will always find somebody who is willing to walk with him. But if you are not willing to walk with him, he does not have to have you. He will go and find somebody else. And sometimes the prostitute will go and take up. take up a filthy mouth person who never even talked straight in his entire life and God just raised him up to put you to shame what are you here for? are you helping to build anybody's life? are you helping to tear it down? what are you here for? Are you on a lie for Christ? Or are you a lie to the devil? Which one? Well, God is calling you to help build each other. It matter if you don't like me. Sooner or later, God can do what he needs to do. If I am the bad egg. But he to help each other. So I give you words of advice about your marriage. Give you words of advice about the way you live. Nobody has to leave to go home and tell who tell who what. Oh, they know my business. All of that. There's something called the Holy Ghost. And he knows all things. Praise ye the Lord somebody. Glory to God. But you got to understand you are here to help build each other. You are here to be a shoulder for me and I'm here to be a shoulder for you. That's what we're here for. That's what love is. Even when we falter and we're weak, there is a shoulder to lean on. Praise ye the Lord. Parents, you know that well more than even I do, per se. That even though your children fail you at times, you still got to be there sometimes for them to lean on you. Especially when you realize that they don't even know what they're doing. Well, that's Jesus right there. But the mature ones who are here, and so on, and you who are still coming up, you got to remember that you are here to help each other to grow. And if you can't get to the point where you understand that simple function, then you'll always be making the same mistake all the time. But you are here to help each other. And so when we do that, the Bible said the body will be compacted. And when the body is compacted, you got to understand, love will shut out the devil. Love will shut out demons. They can't get in between because there is no space. Because there's no strife and animosity and all these things going on. And so you shut them out. Wouldn't you love if you could just shut them? That when they come up against you, them just all. Why? Love is a powerful thing. Glory to God, somebody. Stand to your feet. Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God. Somebody got to start praying now and, and, and say, fill me, Lord. Fill me. Fill me with love. Glory to God. Hallelujah, somebody. As you focus on that thought right now, and you're focusing on, what am I here for? And you look back and you hear what God said. You're here to build each other. You're here to help each other grow. Then you got to take another look at the function and why you are here. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. So we are going to sing the song. And as you meditate on what's your purpose here, glory to God, somebody, and you're going to be f focusing on, I am here to help my brother and my sister to grow. 
And the next thing you'll ask yourself now is, what can I do to effect this process so it become effectual? Hallelujah, somebody. So it has efficacy. Yes, producing the desired result. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. Sing it like you know it. Uh, lift your hands to Jesus. There is some cleansing that need to be done. Oh, hallelujah. This is my soul, bread of heaven. Come on, tell him, feed me. Feed 